Mayoral candidate Andrew Halcrow, thanks for joining us today. It's my pleasure. You've been in Alaska since you were one, and yes. you were just telling me you don't remember a winter like this. No. It, you know, as a matter of fact, when I was growing up, uh, when I was a kid in the 70s and played hockey, all of our games were played outside. We had, there was really no indoor ice arenas when I was a kid. And we started playing hockey middle of October and didn't stop until the middle of March. I mean, we, there was never a February where you looked out your window and saw patches of grass. So, mm. yeah, <laughs> I, I think it's safe to say that things have changed in the winter here. Why are you running for mayor? I'm running for mayor for three reasons. Number one, my small business and private sector background, uh, I think, is, is just the recipe that the city needs at this point in time moving forward with the state budget cuts and some concerns about revenue. Uh, we need a small business uh, owner in, the, in City Hall, uh, somebody with extensive private sector background. The second thing is my work over the last two years at the Anchorage Chamber has really given me insight on how to improve the community's health and public safety, work on things like affordable housing. Um, and really the third thing is, is my management ability, my leadership skills, because I think it is going to be important to maintain the cost of government, contain the cost of government in the next couple of years, because there are going to be some uncertain times. So really it's about, um, uh, it's really about wanting to bring leadership to City Hall in channeling all of my experience over the last 50 years in this community. I want to talk a little bit more about the economy and sure. what concerns you have for Anchorage going into the, into the future, especially with the situation that the state's facing with the budget. What are your concerns? Uh, I was in the legislature 15 years ago when oil was $10 a barrel and we had a billion dollar budget deficit. It was the same song, just a different verse. So as mayor, I'm going to know what the conversations are happening in Juneau as far as where they're looking at cutting. As mayor, then that gives me the ability to plan around those cuts. Uh, my concern is, is that in the next couple of years, I think the state is really going to have to take an ax to state spending. And you're talking about things like municipal revenue sharing assistance, which was $14 million this year to the city. You're talking about things like municipal uh, school debt reimbursement, uh, capital grants and projects, money for our, our roads and bridges. So there's a huge concern that the support that we've had from Juno for the last 15 or 16 years is going to slowly start to ebb and those costs are going to have to be shifted to local cost taxpayers. And so that's a concern of mine. That's the, probably the biggest concern. The economy overall right now is fairly healthy. Would you support diversifying our tax base as a way to help Anchorage through that uh, hole? I think there, there are a number of uh, ways you can do that, and, and it's very important. The first thing you have to do is you have to continue to grow the economy. Tourism, for instance, pays millions to the city uh, through bed taxes, car rental taxes. We need to grow tourism. We also need to get in and redevelop some of our undervalued areas like East Downtown and Fairview to, to broaden the tax base, put, put more increased value on the tax rolls. Um, and I think eventually when the voters get around to it, and of course the sales tax has to be approved by 60% of the, of the voters, um, I, I'd be ready to have those conversations because I do worry, uh, I have two worries. Number one, I, I worry about the burden on property tax payers growing in the future. Um, and the second thing is, I think we have a lot of people that are coming into the community that are impacting roads uh, and schools and public safety and aren't contributing. And I think that hurts local taxpayers. How would you support uh, small businesses and the small business growth within Anchorage if that's one of your goals? It is. And the, really, the, the key to the city and the key to the mayor's job is not just to have a vision for the city, but to make sure the city is running very efficiently. And, and that creates the environment for small business growth and diversifying the economy. Um, one of the key things that I'm focused on is downtown. Because downtown, one, one of the great things about downtown areas in every city is they're a magnet for small independent business. So you don't have the box stores downtown. But when you look at our downtown and some of the public safety problems, there are concerns that I have because you're seeing the small business downtown, their sales have been affected because people perceive downtown is unsafe and that's just simply not true but those are the kinds of concerns that I have with regards to the economy in small business. Do you, you've, you're leading in then to another question that I had about pu public safety so you have a major concern about downtown and you're hearing from small businesses that they're losing sales so what kind of things as mayor can you do to rectify that situation? The first thing is you have to do downtown is you have to grow downtown. The best way to address the public safety issues are grow downtown and in order to grow downtown you have to do a couple of things. We do need additional police protection and it's very difficult because the police, uh, the, the current staffing is, 
that you're 50 officers short. Um, the second thing is you do need to address the chronic inebriate and the homeless problem because no developer is going to go down town and invest money in the area if there's a continued problem with chronic inebriates and homeless. Um, and the third is really uh, the city getting engaged uh, in offering uh, more aggressive tax incentives and tax deferrals to attract the type of development that the city needs. For instance, mixed-use housing, mixed-use developments downtown that provide both housing and retail opportunities. Are you concerned about um, the buildable land within uh, the Anchorage Bowl and whether or not you can balance the commercial land with residential uh, and industrial? Well, it, we've heard for decades about the shrinking availability of land in the Anchorage Bowl. That, that certainly has been a conversation. I think we have a lot of buildable land on the hillside still. Uh, but when you get to the point where Anchorage is as a city and you look at your capacity, your diminishing capacity for, for land development, you have to look inside yourself and say, what are the areas that we can go back in and retool? East Downtown, Fairview, Mountain View, those are areas that are ripe for re redevelopment. They're undervalued and I believe undertaxed. So you go in and you improve those areas, you broaden the tax base and you increase the value of those properties. In, in terms of building, um, I've heard recently from builders that there are certain codes and permits that are getting it more expensive and that, that are kind of getting in the way. Have you had a chance to look into that area yet and, and see need for change? And, and as mayor, could you do that? Yes, I, I think the, the planning and permitting department needs a wholesale change, absolutely. Um, when you look at the complaints that come into the city, a large majority of them are for the planning and permitting department. I think that the department is uh, very unstructured. Uh, I think you have to restructure the entire public works department and the planning and permitting and building safety. I think there are too many concerns out there with builders uh, that go to get a permit or even an individual homeowner that simply wants to do a simple remodel that goes to get a permit that has to go through this torturous process um, and sometimes the city atta attaches uh, mandates that aren't rel relevant. For instance, um, it got a call from uh, a, a woman who said she's trying to remodel her kitchen but they want her to pave her driveway um, and there's all these little things that, that come up. And Anchorage is already an expensive place to, to, to build homes in, in commercial structures. So we need to really make sure that the rules are certain, that builders understand them, uh, and they make sense. I'd like to jump back to public safety again and the Anchorage Police Department, and that's something that we've been talking about a lot recently with um, some of the shootings and crime that we're seeing. And, and uh, we're asking mayoral candidates what they would do, uh, if anything, to address some of the, the problems that you, you see. Can you talk to that? Absolutely, absolutely. The first thing you have to do is you have to build the police force. I mean, in the last four years, we've lost 50 officers. And attrition, we're losing more to attrition than we are graduating from the academy. So uh, the city needs to plan and the next mayor needs to plan for at least two academies a year for the next two or three years. It's going to take time to rebuild the police force because you do have attrition in the time it takes to go through the academy and field training. Um, you need to do other things in addition to rebuilding the police force. You need to rebuild trust within the community. And that's one of the things that I've heard consistently over the last couple of years as I work with some of the minority uh, communities as part of our, our diversity outreach. The, my, there's a lot of minority communities that feel disenfranchised from the city. Um, these are where some of these public safety problems are happening. The, the one thing about Anchorage is it's a very small, big city, and everything is re relative. So education, affordable housing, public safety, they're all intertwined. And so the next mayor really not only has to focus on rebuilding the actual police force, but actually rebuilding the ties in the community and becoming more proactive. Because some of the violence we're seeing, it is because the city has, has, has disengaged from being proactive in some of these communities over the last five years. Is it going to be a challenge though? Is it something that you just can't throw money at or will money help this? I mean, I'm hearing things like, you know, the benefits that police officers are getting aren't, you know, aren't um, equal to some other states and therefore right. they're leaving for other states. I mean, right. what, what kind of solution is that? It, it, is, it is a challenge. I mean, certainly the retirement, when, when you, we've gone from a defined benefit to defined contribution, what's happening is we're investing a, over $100,000 training an officer. They stay for five years and then they get vested and they take their retirement somewhere else where there's a better retirement program. We do need to address that. That's something the state has to address. It's not something the city can address. But we do have to work a little bit harder on recruiting recruitment and retention of officers. And a lot of that, 
can, uh, how you make that progress is actually creating a better relationship between City Hall and the police and fire unions. I think over the last couple of years, the relationship's been very strained. Um, I think morale is at, a, at, a, is at an all-time low, both in the police and the fire. Uh, and I think those are some things that the next mayor has to work on and has to repair. Who would you say your biggest support is behind your campaign and, and run for mayor? Um, I, actually, I have to tell you, I, I, I'm very excited uh, running because I have had an outpouring of support from uh, all kinds of areas, from minority communities, uh, from the business community, from the teaching community, from the education community. Mm. So I've really been blessed by support from a broad range of groups. Mm. You um, have been working you had a meeting with uh, the Education um, Association, I believe, last night. Yes. And can you just tell me about that and what what you what your visions sure. are for the Anchorage School District? If, sure. if there's anything any changes needed as mayor, would you be doing anything different? It was a great forum last night at the museum. There was about 200 educators there. Um, in, in all of the candidates really talked about our vision and what we had done for education over the last several years. And I'm very proud of my education record as chair of the 90% by 2020 the vice chair of the Partnership for Public Education, some of the uh, groundbreaking work we've done at the chamber with teacher studies. I think the most important thing to, to remember is that 93% of all of the children in this city go to public schools, 93%. So that means not just the mayor and the assembly, but the entire community needs to get behind their neighborhood schools. And the schools are going through a lot right now. We're becoming a, a really uh, diverse and, and dynamic city that creates some complexities within the classroom. Uh, you certainly live in a state with the, some of the highest rates of violence. That impacts student learning. So really, one of the things that we talked about last night was understanding that education is growing more complex and you have to create different solutions. There's no more silver bullets for anything, whether public safety or education. Mm. So you're happy with the state of the uh, public system here in Anchorage? Uh, I, I am. We can always do better. Um, and certainly some of my nonprofit efforts are geared towards improving public school outcomes. You can always mm -hmm. do better. But I think by and large Anchorage School District is a, an amazing organization. Uh, it's the 97th largest school district in the company, in, in the country. And I think that, um, I think the superintendent, I think the educators are very committed. And I think this is a very challenging environment to teach schools. And I know a lot of the times we like to compare ourselves with other states, but you really can't do that because we're completely different and we have dramatically different socioeconomic characteristics. Mm. I want to have a talk about the economy again and sure. just throw another question at you about cuts. Have you seen anything um, the way that the city is running at the moment? Um, would you make any cuts anywhere? I can't see any. Uh, you know, certainly the city has uh, sufficient reserves. Uh, you have an unemployment rate of 5%, which is the envy of the entire state. So the local economy is strong. Uh, really, my initial concern is in two or three years out, when the state really starts to swing the heavy axe, cutting, cutting uh, budget numbers, uh, in those impacts on the city. But I think, by and large, the city is very healthy. The economy is healthy. We just need to keep going down that road. And also you mentioned um, earlier on about the chronic inebriates that we have and some, how we can help them um, going forward because there are many solutions that, that, that we can aim for, but we're not seeing them happen, say more detox beds. Is that something that you as mayor would be aiming for to try and help these people? Absolutely. And it has to be a comprehensive approach. The challenge with the chronic inebriate and homeless problem is we have really just nibbled around the edges the last few years. And you're going to need a comprehensive approach. You're going to need to get all of the social services engaged. You're going to bring in, you're going to need to bring in the Alaska Mental Health Trust Authority because they have land. You're going to need to bring in the state health, in, in the city health services. And we're going to need to sit around the table and say, what is the long view of this? Because there's two critical reasons. It's not just a public safety uh, and community health issue where you have chronic inebriates and homeless and you have these tragedies happening in these homeless camps. If we want to develop Anchorage, if we want to go into these areas that are ripe for redevelopment like East Downtown and Fairview, you have to address the chronic inebriate and homeless problem because no developer is going to want to invest if the environment isn't clean. 
So it sounds like one of your goals would be to bring, as you said, all of these people together and work out a new plan to, are they, to better work together. Are, are we sort of seeing a disconnect between some of the services that could be helping these people and they're not, they're not working as well as you would like to see? Yeah, ab absolutely. And I think that's I mean, that standard operating procedure in, the, in this kind of an environment, this is why leadership from City Hall is so important. And it's what we've done with the education, uh, our education initiative. So suddenly you have... Uh, campfire sitting next to Boys and Girls Club, sitting next to Junior Achievement, and all of these three groups are talking for the first time, and they're all doing great work. But suddenly you have these channels of communication where they're talking and they're strategizing about, well, we could do this, well, we have this. And that's similar to the social services because part of the problem with this concentration of chronic inebriates downtown is that's where all the social services are centered in East Downtown. So we really have to sit down with these folks and say, you're doing great work, but how do we expand this to address the bigger problem? Because what we're doing nibbling around the edges just simply hasn't worked. Any other big visions uh, if you were elected as mayor? <laughs> yes, uh, a lot of big visions. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 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 you know, I, I love this city. I've spent 50 years here. This city has been great to me. It's been great to my family. It's been great to the people I love. Um, I, I just have such a great vision for Anchorage, I feel, that's been developed over the last couple of years. Uh, that that I think really we need to get to. I mean, this is Anchorage's 100th uh, year. Uh, it's our centennial celebration. And I think the next mayor really in the, in the next two terms has to set the pace for the next 100 years. And I think it's a very critical time in Anchorage's history. And I think we have so much promise in, I believe, in this city. A final question I'm throwing to all the candidates. Uh, have you considered who you would hire as a city manager? Very important position. Um, I don't hire anybody before I get elected. Thank you. You bet. Andrew Halcrow, thanks for joining us today, mayoral candidate. Thank you.